At the Battle of Emmendingen, on 19 October 1796, the French army of Rhin et Moselle under Jean Victor Marie Moreau fought the first coalition army of the Upper Rhine commanded by Archduke Charles, Duke of Teschen. Emmendingen is located on the Els River in Baden Wurttemberg, Germany, 9 miles 14 km north of Freiburg im Breigau. The action occurred during the War of the First Coalition, the first phase of the larger French Revolutionary Wars. After a summer of parrying between the two sides, the French were already withdrawing through the Black Forest to the Rhine. In close pursuit, the Austrians forced the French commander to split his force so he could cross the Rhine at three points via the bridges at Kell, Breisach, and Hunningen. By mid-September, though, the Austrians controlled the approaches to the crossings at Breisach and Kell. Moreau still wanted half his army to approach the Austrians at Kell. The rugged terrain at Emmendingen complicated fighting, making it possible for the Habsburg force to snipe at the French troops, and to block any passage toward Kell. Rainy and cold weather further hampered the efforts of both sides, turning streams and rivulets into rushing torrents of water, and making roadways slippery. The fighting was fierce, two generals died in the battle, one from each side. Habsburg's success at Emmendingen forced the French to abandon their plans for a three-pronged, or even a two-pronged, withdrawal. The French continued their retreat through the Black Forest mountain towns to the south, where the armies fought the Battle of Schlingen five days later. <inaudible> <inaudible> Background Initially, the rulers of Europe viewed the French Revolution as a dispute between the French king and his subjects, and not something in which they should interfere. As revolutionary rhetoric grew more strident, they declared the interest of the monarchs of Europe as one with the interests of Louis XVI and his family. This declaration of Pilnitz, the 27th of August 1791, threatened ambiguous but quite serious consequences if anything should happen to the royal family. The position of the revolutionaries became increasingly difficult. Compounding their problems in international relations, French émigrés continued to agitate for support of a counter-revolution. Finally, on 20 April 1792, the French National Convention declared war on Austria. In this War of the First Coalition 1792 France ranged itself against most of the European states sharing land or water borders with her, plus Portugal and the Ottoman Empire. Despite some victories in 1792, by early 1793, France was in crisis, French forces had been pushed out of Belgium, the French king had just been executed, and there was revolt in the Vendée over conscription and widespread resentment of the civil constitution of the clergy. The armies of the French Republic were in a state of disruption, the problems became even more acute following the introduction of mass conscription, the levée en masse, which saturated an already distressed army with thousands of illiterate, untrained men. For the French, the Rhine campaign of 1795 proved especially disastrous, although they had achieved some success in other theatres of war, including the War of the Pyrenees 1793-1795. The armies of the First Coalition included the imperial contingents and the infantry and cavalry of the various states, amounting to about 125,000 including three autonomous corps, a sizable force by 18th-century standards but a moderate force by the standards of the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. In total, the commander-in-chief Archduke Charles's troops stretched from Switzerland to the North Sea and Dagobert Sigmund von Wormser's, from the Swiss-Italian border to the Adriatic. Habsburg troops comprised the bulk of the army, but the thin white line of coalition infantry could not cover the territory from Basel to Frankfurt with sufficient depth to resist the pressure of their opponents. Compared to French coverage, Charles had half the number of troops to cover a 340-kilometre front that stretched from Renchen near Basel to Bingen. Furthermore, he had concentrated the bulk of his force, commanded by Count Bailet Latour, between Karlsruhe and Darmstadt, where the confluence of the Rhine and the Main made an attack most likely. The rivers offered a gateway into eastern German states and ultimately to Vienna, with good bridges crossing a relatively well-defined river bank. To his north, Wilhelm von Wartensleben's autonomous corps covered the line between Mainz and Gießen. The Austrian army consisted of professionals, many brought from the border regions in the Balkans, and conscripts drafted from the imperial circles. <laughs> Resumption of fighting, 1796 
In January 1796, the French and the members of the First Coalition called a truce, ending the Rhine Campaign of 1795. They understood it was temporary. This agreement lasted until the 20th of May 1796, when the Austrians announced that it would end on the 31st of May. The coalition's army of the Lower Rhine included 90,000 troops, mostly Habsburg and Reichsarmee, imperial troops mustered from the states of the Holy Roman Empire. The 20,000-man right wing under Duke Ferdinand Frederick Augustus of Württemberg stood on the east bank of the Rhine behind the Sieg River, observing the French bridgehead at Dusseldorf. The garrisons of Mainz Fortress and Ehrenbreitstein Fortress counted 10,000 more. Charles posted the remainder of the Habsburg and coalition force on the west bank behind the Nahe. Dagobert Sigmund von Wormser led the 80,000-strong army of the Upper Rhine. Its right wing occupied Kaiserslautern on the west bank, and the left wing under Anton Stare, Michael von Froelich and Louis Joseph, Prince of Condé guarded the Rhine from Mannheim to Switzerland. The original coalition strategy was to capture Trier and to use the position on the west bank to strike at each of the French armies in turn. However, news arrived in Vienna of Bonaparte's successes. Reconsidering the situation, the Aulic Council gave Archduke Charles command over both Austrian armies and ordered him to hold his ground and sent Wormser to Italy with 25,000 reinforcements. The loss of Wormser and his troops weakened the coalition force considerably. On the French side, the 80,000 man army of Sambra et Meuse held the west bank of the Rhine down to the Nahe and then southwest to Saint Wendel. On the army's left flank, Jean Baptiste Clabert had 22,000 troops in an entrenched camp at Dusseldorf. The right wing of the army of Rhin et Moselle was positioned behind the Rhine from Hunningen northward, its center was along the Quike River near Landau and its left wing extended west toward Saarbrücken. Pierre-Marie Barthélemy Farino led Moreau's right wing, Louis de Sakes commanded the center and Laurent Gauvion saint cyr directed the left wing. Farino's wing consisted of three infantry and cavalry divisions under François-Antoine Louis Borsier and Henri-François Delaborde. De Sykes's command counted three divisions led by Michel de Beaupuy, Antoine Guillaume Delmas and Charles Antoine Zantrails. Saint Cyr's wing had two divisions commanded by Guillaume Philibert Duhesme, and Taponier. The French Grand Plan called for two French armies to press against the flanks of the northern armies in the German states while simultaneously a third army approached Vienna through Italy. Jordan's army would push southeast from Dusseldorf, intending to draw troops and attention toward themselves, which would allow Moreau's army an easier crossing of the Rhine between Kell and Hunningen. According to plan, Jordan's army fainted toward Mannheim, and Charles quickly reapportioned his troops. Moreau's army attacked the bridgehead at Kell, which was guarded by 7,000 imperial troops. Troops recruited that spring from the Swabian Circle polities, inexperienced and untrained which amazingly held the bridgehead for several hours, but then retreated toward Rastatt. On June 23-24, Moreau reinforced the bridgehead with his forward guard. After pushing the imperial militia from their post on the bridgehead, his troops poured into Baden unhindered. Similarly, in the south, by Basel, Farino's column moved speedily across the river and proceeded up the Rhine along the Swiss and German shoreline, toward Lake Constance and into the southern end of the Black Forest. Anxious that his supply lines would be overextended, Charles began a retreat to the east. At this point, the inherent jealousies and competition between generals came into play. Moreau could have joined up with Jordan's army in the north, but did not. He proceeded eastward, pushing Charles into Bavaria. Jordan also moved eastward, pushing Wartensleben's autonomous corps into the Ernestine duchies, and neither general seemed willing to unite his flank with his compatriots. There followed a summer of strategic retreats, flanking, and reflanking maneuvers. On either side, the union of two armies Wartensleben's with Charles's or Jordan's with Moreau's could have crushed the opposition. Wartensleben and Charles united first, and the tide turned against the French. With 25,000 of his best troops, the Archduke crossed to the north bank of the Danube at Regensburg and moved north to join his colleague Wartensleben. The defeat of Jordan's army at the battles of Amberg, Würzburg and Altenkirchen allowed Charles to move more troops to the south. The next contact occurred on 19 October at Emmendingen. Terrain Emmendingen lies in the Els Valley, which winds through the Black Forest. The Els creates a series of hanging valleys which challenge the passage of large bodies of troops. The rainy weather further complicated the passage through the Els Valley. 
The area around Regal am Kaiserstuhl is noted for its lowest and narrow transition points, which greatly influenced the battle. Dispositions The better part of the French army debouched through the Hall Valley. De Sykes's left wing included the nine battalions and twelve squadrons of the division Street Suzanne by Regal, straddling both shores of the Els. To the right, between Malterdingen and Emmendingen, Bopuy commanded a division of twelve battalions and twelve squadrons. Further to the right, by Emmendingen itself, and in the heights by Heimbach, stood St. Cyr. Around this stretched the Duhesme's division, twelve battalions and eight squadrons. Further to the right of these, in the Els Valley by Waldkirch stood Ambert's division and the Girard Brigade, by Zaringen, about a mile away, Le Corbe's brigade stood in reserve, and, stretching northward from there, a mounted division of 14,000 roamed the vicinity of Holzhausen nowadays part of March, Breigau. These positions created a line about 3 miles 5 kilometers long. On the far side of Le Corbe's brigade stood Farino's 15 battalions and 16 squadrons, but these were well to the south and east of Freiburg im Breigau, still tramping through the mountains. Everyone had been hampered by heavy rains, the ground was soft and slippery, and both the Rhine and Els rivers had flooded, as had the many tributaries. This increased the hazards of mounted attack, because the horses could not get a good footing, against this stood the Archduke's force. Upon reaching a few miles of Emmendingen, the Archduke split his force into four columns. Column Nauendorf, in the Upper Els, had eight battalions and fourteen squadrons, advancing southwest to Waldkirch. Wartensleben had twelve battalions and twenty-three squadrons advancing south to capture the Els bridge at Emmendingen. Latour, with 6,000 men, was to cross the foothills via Heimbach and Malterdingen, and capture the bridge of Kondringen, between Regal and Emmendingen, and Column Fürstenberg held Kinzingen, about 2 miles .2 kilometers north of Regal. Froelich and Condé, part of Nauendorf's column, were instructed to pin down Farino and the French right wing in the Stieg Valley. <laughs> Battle The first to arrive at Emmendingen, the French secured the high point at Waldkirch, which commanded the neighboring valleys. It was considered, at the time, a maxim of military tactics, that command of the mountains gave control of the valleys. By 19 October, the armies faced each other, on the banks of the Els from Waldkirch to Emmendingen. By then, Moreau knew he could not proceed to Kell along the right bank of the Rhine, so he decided to cross the Rhine further north, at Breisach. The bridge there was small, though, and his whole army could not pass over without causing a bottleneck, so he sent only the left wing, commanded by de Sakes, to cross there. At dawn, St. Cyr French right advanced along the Els Valley. Nauendorf prepared to move his Habsburg forces down the valley. Seeing this, St. Cyr sent a small column across the mountains to the east of the main valley, to the village of Simonswald, located in a side valley. He instructed them to attack Nauendorf's left, and to force him to withdraw from Bleibach. Anticipating this, though, Nauendorf had already posted units on the heights along the Els Valley, from which Austrian shooters ambushed St. Cyr's men. On the other side of the Els Valley, more Habsburg gunmen reached Kolnau, which overlooked Waldkirch, and from there they could fire down on the French force. The fighting was swift and furious. The superior Austrian positions forced St. Cyr to cancel his advance on Bleibach and withdraw to Waldkirch. Even there, though, Nauendorf's men continued to harass him, and St. Cyr retreated another two miles three kilometers to the relative safety of Denzelingen. The fighting went no better for the French on their left. Dekan's advanced guard proceeded forward, albeit cautiously. Austrian marksmen fired down upon the column, and Dekan fell from his horse, injured. Bopuy took Dekan's place with the advance guard. At midday, Latour abandoned his customary caution and sent two columns to attack Bopuy between Malterdingen and Hollenthal Valdonfer, resulting in a fierce firefight. After giving an order to retreat along the Els, Bopuy was killed and his division did not receive an order to retreat, causing additional losses for the French. In the centre, French riflemen posted in the Landic Wood, two miles three kilometers north of Emmendingen, held up two of Wartensleben's detachments while his third struggled over muddy, nearly impassable, roads. Wartensleben's men needed all day to fight their way to Emmendingen, and during the shooting, Wartensleben's left arm was shattered by a musket ball. Finally, late in the day, Wartensleben's third column arrived and threatened to outflank the French right. The French retreated across the Els River, destroying the bridges behind them. At the close of the day's fighting, Moreau's force stood in a precarious position. 
Left to right, the French were stretched along a jagged, broken line of about 8 miles 13 km. Dequenne's division stood at Regal and Endingen, at the northeastern corner of the Kaiserstuhl, no longer of any assistance to the bulk of Moreau's force. Moreau had also lost an energetic and promising officer in Beaupuy. On the right, St. Cyr's division stood behind Denzelingen, and the left stretched to Unterut, a thin line also separated from the centre, at Nimburg near Tenningen and Landic, halfway between Regal and Unterut. The French line faced northeast towards the Austrians. Despite Habsburg successes throughout the day, the coalition forces were unable to flank the French line, and the French consequently were able to withdraw in reasonably good order to the south. Topic: <laughs> Aftermath. Both sides lost a general. Wartensleben was shot with a musket ball and died of his wounds 18 months later in Vienna, and general of division Michel de Beaupuy was hit by a cannonball and died immediately. Out of approximately 32,000 troops who could have participated, the French lost 1,000 killed and wounded, and close to 1,800 captured, plus the loss of two artillery pieces. The Austrians sent 10,000 out of 28,000 troops available 36%, and lost about 1,000 killed, wounded or missing 10%. Smith estimates the French troop count based on united count of Ferino and Moreau at the Battle of Schlingen. Four days later, the only way to reacquire the crossing at Kell, Moreau needed to send a sizable force against Franz Petrisch, who had held the approaches since September, and this force was no longer available after Emmendingen. By controlling the eastern access to the Kel Strasbourg crossing, Petrisch forced Moreau to march south. Any retreat into France would have to occur via the bridges at Huntingen, a longer march, not at Kel and Strasbourg. The lack of bridges did not slow the coalition's pursuit. The coalition forces repaired the bridges by Malterdingen, and moved on Moreau at Freiburg im Breigau within 24 hours. On 20 October, Moreau's army of 20,000 united south of Freiburg with Farino's column. Farino's force was smaller than Moreau had hoped, bringing the total of the combined French force to about 32,000. Charles's combined forces of 24,000 closely followed Moreau's rear guard from Freiburg, southwest, to a line of hills stretching between Condern and the Rhine. Skirting the mountain towns, Moreau next engaged the Archduke at the Battle of Schlingen. Notes, citations and alphabetical listing of resources Notes Citations Alphabetical listing of resources <laughs>